Hi and uh, welcome to the third video on the configuration software for uh, Zactex Whisper transmitters. So we, we'll, on the first two, we went over all the configuration, all the settings. And this one, we'll look more into this status window. So this status window is always there. Doesn't matter uh, what tab you have here, always live here. And uh, what's happening here is you you see information that is continuously sent from the transmitter whenever it's connected. You see it updates uh, the time here, also updates the, the position once in a while, see different information uh, points. So let's start with this lower portion here. This is the text window. It's used only in a very few cases. It's used when the transmitter is booting up. So let's reset the transmitter. You can press this restart button and it will uh, send a reset signal the microcontroller will restart and you will see a start message. So it says Zactec desktop, desktop transmitter. Uh, so that's a startup message. Also, if there is an error in the hardware itself, it will show up here as an error message. And it, and it will tell you what kind of error it has uh, occurred in inside the transmitter. And also, if you press the set button, save settings, uh, you will see configuration saved. So these are the three startup, save messages and error messages. That's what you can see in this lower portion. So this is, uh, as it says, GPS information, and this is device status. So uh, that that picture there shows what kind of transmitter is uh, connected. So let's uh, close that one. I have another one connected here, and uh, let's open up that one instead. And you see that's a different. That's the what's called the LP1 transmitter. It has just one low pass filter, so that's the LP1. Um, but otherwise, it's similar to the desktop transmitter. It has 200 milliwatts of power and it can transmit on all uh, all different bands. Uh, so the 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 picture that should corresponds to the hardware that you have attached. Otherwise, something is wrong. So uh, that's a, a, just a good reminder that if you have several connected that you pick the right one, uh, as you can see in the picture. Also, there is some extra information that could be useful, and that's the device name. You can set that to whatever you want to. So in this one, when I connected, it said GPS constellation test firmware. So it has a specific test firmware. So is to Make sure I don't miss that. I wrote, I've written that out. Usually it just says, uh, I guess it says desktop transmitter. Uh, but you, if you have several, you can then give them whatever useful name. Say this one is a, you use this in your car as a tracker. Maybe you can just uh, write something to, Remember that, so so the next time uh, you connect, you, you just you can see them as a reminder. Yeah, this is my car tracker, right, right. So that's pretty useful. You can type in whatever you want to and uh, and save that, and it will show up uh, whenever you connect uh, to it. So in the device status, besides having this uh, this picture, it also has hardware information and firmware information. So uh, let's start here with these two numbers. That, that's the version, hardware version, and that's the revision. Same with firmware, that's the firmware version, and that's the revision. So what's the difference? Well, hardware is, uh, um, the version is always the major thing. So I have only two different version, version one and two, the different, uh, between them is what kind of microcontroller I'm using. Uh, so for the longest time, I used uh, what's called AT Mega 328 microcontroller, and that was hard hardware version one. And then I switched to a different one, uh, and used to and it uses as it has to be compiled in a different way, using different firmware. You have to really pay attention that this is a version 2 so that you also pick the correct firmware and that's why I gave them different hardware versions. The revision is is uh, the revision of the of the hardware and that could be uh, 
just minor changes maybe I changed a component around maybe I moved something uh, maybe I for example of this filter I gave it uh, I, some more places to put uh, uh, capacitors in parallel and so I did some small changes on the on the printed circuit board and then I every time I do a small change I then up the revision uh, I changed the GPS socket to, to use another chip. And um, so this started out as revision one when I started, and now it's up to 17 there. And so you, you can understand there's a lot of changes going on, but usually they're very small changes. And uh, so for each hardware revision, there's a new schematics. So you can, if you really want to see what, what uh, specific revision is, you can just download the schematics and see uh, what the specific is. It's, as I said, Usually very minor stuff. I added uh, some protection uh, on the input uh, lately. I did some other stuff, and for each uh, a revision is going up. So uh, that's the hardware. <coughs> there's hardware one and two, and in, in in each version there's also revisions. Same with the firmware. So for hardware two, you would run the firmware two. So let's connect to the desktop. I think that was an older version. I think that was version one. Yeah, so for hardware one, I use a firmware, which is a version one uh, at the same time. And it's the same there, it has revision. These revision on the firmware give all the different features. If you look into the Whisper Beacon, all the, the schedule and all of that stuff, that came um, around version uh, revision 10 or something like that. So for, for each time I, I do a new feature, there's a new revision. Uh, number 15 is the latest one. Uh, uh, it's the latest revision. So there you go. This uh, hardware is also placed on a sticker on the bottom side of the transmitter. So it should said one. I think it says one colon 22 or one point 22 on the hardware side there. So these should match. Uh, you don't need to, you don't have to worry about the hardware, but sometimes I have a feature that's only available on so certain version and revision, and then it could be a good thing to keep track of that. Okay, I mentioned the restart button, it resets the uh, device. So Let's see, it's actually transmitting now on the 20 meter band. It started a, a transmission cycle there. Let's see what happens if I press this button. Okay, so you, you notice here that it's not transmitting anymore. It says off here. Uh, and it dropped out because I resetted it and it will then try to find a new time slot here in two minutes and start all over again. Okay, <clears throat> so current output frequency, it's the frequency that is used by the uh, whisper transmitter or the uh, signal uh, generator. So if I just generate a, a single tone higher start as a signal generator, this is the frequency. And, and if I change that here, you see the corresponding frequency changed. So this is the output frequency right now. and uh, when the whisper beacon is running, uh, you will see what band it is, but also you will you can see the modulation uh, here on the on the uh, fine fine side. Huh? So once it starts up, it's now 30 seconds uh, before it starts up again. Uh, you will see how this uh, then shows the uh, the band and frequency. It will start on the 20 meter band, so it will go back to 40 megahertz here. And also when the transmitter is actually outputting something on its uh, RF connector, uh, the transmitting uh, transmitter output indicator here will say will say on, and it's it's a red indicator just to show you that it's actually transmitting something. Okay, it missed that time slot uh, for some reason. Uh, I think um, it didn't have the correct. Uh, position lock or something, so we have to wait until we will see that again. 
maybe I can just start the scene again right? so you can see. There you go. Uh, you see the transmitter is out putting something. So these are indicator that the transmitter is running, outputting something. Uh, let's. Uh, let's make sure. Oh, we will take away the suffix. There we go. The program running this section here indicates uh, what's what subroutine is running inside the transmitter. It has two subroutines: the whisper beacon, which is the most advanced one, and it's the one that. Is usually using, uh, but also signal the signal generator is a small subroutine, uh, uh, and the, the only thing that does is listening to whatever frequency you're commanding it to go to. So now that when it's in the signal generator, whenever you're commanding it to go to a new frequency, uh, it will do that on the spot as soon as you click something here, it will change its uh, frequency on the output. There's also if you press stop so it will drop down to the idle subroutine. The idle subroutine doesn't output anything. It just listens to whatever is going on here in the computer. Whenever you command it to do something, it will do that. Otherwise, it's just listening for serial put data. That's what it does. It's also listening to the GPS and updating uh, this information. Uh, that's also what it does in the idle software. So let's go start the whisper again. We'll see now the whisper subroutine is running. And let's see uh, what the other data is here. So let's go to the final window, the GPS information window. Uh, it's showing the, G the satellites, and it has different colors to show you which satellites are the strongest ones. So light green is the strongest one, followed by darker green. And then uh, the yellow one is marginal. It's really not a uh, very strong signal here. That varies over time as the satellites move around and you have a better reception of, of some of them. If you want to see exactly uh, <clears throat> what signal strength a specific satellite has, you can put the mouse over it and says this is satellite number 16. And uh, you get the azimuth and the elevation. So it's 51 degrees above the horizon. So Pretty neat. Uh, signal to noise ratio 41 decibels, so that's very strong. This is even stronger at 44 decibels. So let's see this one 33, so it's not that strong. Yeah, and these are marginal, it's just 24, 24 dB. So you can get a pretty good indication on, on what kind of satellites it's receiving now. Um, the rings here are uh, for the elevation, so the closer to the center, the more straight above you they, uh, the satellite are. So this is the horizon around you, and this is just on top of you. The uh, <coughs> GPS time is indicated here as well, and uh, it's the UTC time or the Zulu or Greenwich Mean Time. Uh, that is uh, kept by the satellites and transmitted in the uh, GPS uh, data uh, sent to you. Okay, notice now that it's the top of a two minute window. It's starting to transmit here. And you see that on the transmitter output turn red here. When the whisper beacon is running, it is uh, working pretty hard to modulate and to send all the bits at the correct time. So to make sure it has enough time to do the import, the most important job of, of the whisper beacon is, of course, to send this whisper information. So to make sure that it has enough time, it stops to update this GPS information during these two minutes when it's doing the transmission. It's only doing that. It's updating this progress bar and it's updating the frequency. That's and of course, changing the frequency to modulate the output. So that's why you see all of this goes going gray. Gray means it was a while since I received this information. It's probably not accurate anymore. That's what gray means here. And <clears throat> you will see there is a slight 
10 or nine second slot between the bands. So when the 40 meter is complete and it jumps over to 30 meter, there will be nine seconds of data where it will then not transmit, start to listen to the GPS again and time and 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 uh, wait until it says 08 here. During these nine seconds, it will update this window again. And that will happen soon. You see the progress bar here. And you will get the correct time here now, you see. A few seconds of data. So this turned up again. You got all the colors back. And then now it's off again. And you will see after a few seconds, these will turn gray, all of them. So don't be alarmed if these goes becomes grayed out. It's by default. It's by design, as we say. Um, and it's pretty normal when it's doing its transmission. So let's drop out of the transmission so that we get updates again. Um, the signal quality is derived by this information from here. Um, if you hover about it, it says signal to noise ratio of the four strongest satellites. So it's taking these four strongest ones, these light greens, and it's using that signal to noise ratio. Um, it's 37, 37, 35, 35. And it's doing a calculation how, how strong is that? And you're presenting it as a progress bar from zero to 100%. If you have a perfect reception with an outdoors antenna on top of your roof, you will probably be in the 80% area, something like that. So why not 100%? Well, I, I have different GPS chip. I started out with another chip that has slightly better performance, and they will give 100%. Uh, but this is, I mean, anything all above, I would say 35, 40% is okay. So as long as this is blue or green or something like that, you're, you're, you're okay. If you, if I unplug the, um, uh, if I unplug the antenna here, you will see you, it will lose uh, the satellites and, you, and the signal strength will, will drop down. And when it does that, it will go turn red or, or yellow. Okay, let's plug it back. So, uh, yeah, as I said, anything about 40% is okay. You don't have to be better than that. The time I already mentioned, uh, this is your position, uh, as stated, as a maiden head a grid. Uh, and the these are the six characters of the maiden head. It will usually only use four of them for a, a transmission. But it can sometimes use six if you tick that option or if you use something else that will force that option on so that should be enough as i said you don't have to understand all of this it's just nice to know and uh, you can these things are nice to know you can see what's going on it's now an idle uh, so uh, you can force that to start here yeah, by pressing the start button okay i think that's enough for the third video you now know most of the stuff that you can do on the transmitter and you're good to go. And uh, maybe in the next one, we'll talk a bit of this boot configuration and we'll mention the LED, uh, the signal uh, lights on the transmitter itself. So thank you for sticking around, 73, and uh, catch you in the next one.